All right. Well, hello, everyone. And uh, we appreciate you taking time to join us today uh, for a little bit of Seed Grant Proposal 101. Um, with us on the line today, we have um, our entire leadership team for the uh, NASA Scope Project. So I'd like to introduce you to Minnie. So Minnie Wadwa is the PI of the NASA Scope Project. Um, she's also kind of a big deal in the Mars world uh, because she is the <laughs> She's the principal scientist for the Mars Sample Return uh, Projects. Uh, she's also the director of our school here at Arizona State University in the School of Earth and Space Exploration. Um, also with us is Dave Williams. He is deputy PI of the SCOPE project. And uh, Dave is the director of the Greeley Center. Um, and also, hold up, I got another one for you. I looked you up today just to make sure I had all the things. You're director of the Greeley Center and also director of the NASA Planetary Aeolian Laboratory. Laboratory. Um, also here is Sina Kirk. So Sina is all things communication. So she is all about making sure that we get all the information out to you. And I have been your primary conduit thus far. My name is Jessica Swan, also WPI of the SCOPE project. And without further ado, let me go ahead and pull up the slide deck. And I will hand it over to Minnie. All right, thank you so much, Jess. And Jess, of course, is our uh, uh, organizer extraordinaire and 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 uh, leader of all things uh, uh, that we are sort of plant that heaven works for the for our scope project. And um, so, if you have any questions or any follow up things, Jess is the the great sort of point of contact that you that you get to interact with and and certainly feel free to reach out to me or Dave as well if you have any any follow up questions. Um, so yeah really pleased to have everybody here um, excited for you to apply for this opportunity. Um, this is actually. Uh, an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have, of course, but if you have, as I said, any follow up things, uh, please do feel free to reach out to us. Next slide. So this is what we're going to talk about uh, during this uh, next hour or so, and um, I'm going to make this uh, brief presentation and then we'll have any sort of open Q&A uh, that you might have questions that to follow up. Uh, talk a little bit about the NASA scope project and the science activation program. Um, then I'll tell you a little bit more about the seed grant uh, proposal writing process and what's required for that. Um, I'll discuss how the funding is gonna be dispersed, which I'm sure is something that you'll be interested in hearing about. Um, and then just a few sort of tips for success that will help to ensure that you have a strong proposal coming in. So uh, next slide. So um, just to sort of make you uh, a little aware, first of all, about what uh, NASA's science activation program is about. This is a program that exists within the Science Mission Directorate. And uh, as many of you may know, the Science Mission Directorate has five disciplinary uh, divisions. Uh, and these uh, include earth science, planetary science, heliophysics, astrophysics, biological and physical sciences. And so, basically what the science activation program does is to essentially provide funding for uh, competitively selected teams and there are 51 that are currently in the science activation portfolio and the goal is basically to utilize nasa uh, science experts nasa content nasa experiences uh, to basically allow these teams, which are made up of educators and communicators, and these are professional folks that basically help to make that content and those experiences available to a broad uh, audience of learners that are out there to basically inspire individuals to uh, and also inspire STEM education and to, to emphasize basically the inspirational uh, side of what NASA does best. And so um, that's that's the goal of the science activation program. And as I mentioned, there's 51 teams. We are, NASA Scope is one of those 51 teams. The particular niche that we have within this ecosystem is uh, explained in the next slide. Um, actually, it's not explained in the next slide. This is just sort of recapping <laughs> what the Science Activation Program really does. 21 million learner interactions 
It's spread across all 52 states. Next slide. And this is what we're going to do. So NASA scope, our particular goal is to provide mechanisms and facilitate the contacts and interaction and engagement of subject matter experts like yourselves to engage with the educators and communicators that are part of the science activation teams, the other 50 teams that are trying to engage with a broad set of learners of lots of different demographics um, and lots of different areas. Uh, we are basically, our goal is to try to make sure that we are helping to connect you, the subject matter experts, with those different teams. And so that was something that had been actually um, uh, pointed out in a recent National Academy study, which evaluated the whole science activation portfolio. And they noted this big gap that, in fact, there was not a formal mechanism for actually engaging with the broader subject matter experts that are NASA funded with these science activation teams. And so that's that's the goal that we're trying to uh, trying to make. Next slide. So what we're trying to do with this particular seed, seed grant opportunity, and there's a number of different programs that NASA Scope is uh, participating in to try to make those uh, uh, interactions with the subject matter experts um, to really make those uh, connections. But the seed grant opportunity is sort of in a, in a way our kind of flagship kind of opportunity that we offer. Um, the goal is to reduce barriers for you to engage with science activation projects, you know, as, as um, scientists and as engineers, you know, we have obviously a lot, our plates are already full with lots of different things to do. Um, you may feel strongly about, you know, public um, outreach and, and engagement, but um, I think, you know, what we want to try to do is to reduce those barriers that you may have in terms of resources and, and your time so that your time is actually in some ways paid for. Um, and so we would basically hope to provide you with the resources that you need to engage with some of these science activation teams that most resonate with what you would like to get out there or share with the broader audience of learners out there. So uh, what we offer are these seed grants that range from somewhere between $5,000 to $20,000 per year. And these are, Basically, you apply for these one year at a time, but we will consider uh, projects that are continuations of previous years. And so you could essentially have multi-year projects, but you apply for these grants one year at a time. Uh, the proposal for this next opportunity, uh, these proposals are due on August 30th, so um, very soon. And so hopefully uh, many of you will be you know, inspired to, to prepare these proposals. And, and they're not, they're not uh, extremely time intensive. They're meant to be short and they're meant to sort of really capture kind of the project that you want to try to achieve uh, and hopefully, you know, not spend a whole lot of time doing it. But what it also does is actually give you some experience uh, with kind of writing proposals uh, and responsive to NASA opportunities. And hopefully, um, you know, you may already have experience writing NASA proposals, but if you don't, then this is a good way to sort of, uh, you know, get your feet wet trying to uh, learn how to do the proposal writing aspect of things as well. Um, next slide. So this is now talking a little bit about uh, uh, what's needed uh, as part of the proposal that you're going to be submitting. And I, I would encourage you to actually take a screenshot of this if you can. Uh, this is the website uh, where we have a lot of, uh, of the resources, the templates for the proposal writing. Uh, you can download those. Um, and again, if you have any questions, certainly feel free to reach out to us as well. So next slide. So the components of a proposal, uh, the cover sheet is the, is, the, is, the, is the front piece for the proposal. It will require you to provide a proposal title, uh, your information in terms of a name, position, title, institution, um, and also information on the science activation team that you're collaborating with. And by the way, if you need any assistance with connecting with science activation teams, please connect with us. And in fact, I mean, Jess actually is, is our point of contact for that. And she's been really great in terms of um, connecting people that have reached out to, to us uh, with science activation teams that would be sort of aligned with what your interests are. Um, and then of course, the information on the team members and collaborators is also requested as part of that uh, cover sheet. Their, their names, as well as position titles, their institutional affiliations, that type of information is also required on that cover sheet. 
So as I said, you know, reach out early uh, if you have any um, questions and, and Jess's uh, contact information, of course, is provided here for your convenience. Next slide. So this is the meat of the proposal, the technical description of the project. It should not exceed a thousand words. So that's nominally, that's about two pages. So not a lot of heavy lifting on nor normal, you know, NASA research proposal is about 15 pages. This is only two. So you have to be very concise in terms of what you're trying to uh, convey as part of those two pages. You definitely need to include something about the motivation or the need for the project that you're proposing. Uh, there should be some details of what you're going to be doing and also something about the measurable outcomes and impact of the project that you are going to be proposing. So, uh, you know, here are some examples of the kinds of things that you might propose um, uh, in terms of, you know, the kinds of details that you might present as, as well as some of the types of outcomes and impact that you can demonstrate. And by the way, this slide presentation will be accessible to you later. So uh, Jess will share this. So you don't necessarily need to take screenshots, actually. <laughs> but you can, you can certainly uh, come back to this anytime you want. Next slide. The technical description should also include some sort of work plan or timeline. And here are a couple of examples of the kinds of ways in which you can actually illustrate your work plan and timeline for your project. Um, basically defining kind of what the activity is going to be and when that activity is going to take place. Uh, you can also show a separate one for the science activation team uh, work plan in terms of, you know, the places where you connect with the science activation team and what they're going to be doing with you. Um, keep it relatively high level um, and uh, basically uh, make sure, you know, that that what, whatever you propose is going to be accessible to uh, people that may be otherwise unfamiliar uh, with your work, because we have obviously have uh, a review uh, team that's made up of, uh, of experts in all of the different SMD areas. And so uh, we want to make sure that they all um, can access kind of the information that you're trying to provide. Next slide. And this is really important, of course, uh, the budget and budget justification. The budget is typically a, a table uh, or tabulated form of showing kind of what kind of funds you will be needing to do the work um, that you need to do. Uh, so you need to provide that, of course, but then you also need to provide a budget justification, which is basically a bulletized list of items that are shown in the table. So you obviously have a list of things in the table and, and the justification is an explanation of those. So it's basically one, one or two sentences of uh, explanation for each of the items that you have as part of that table. Um, so basically, one thing that we want to make sure, though, is that, you know, if it's going to be just you that's requesting the funds, um, it's fine to, of course, uh, uh, indicate exactly what you need. But if there's more than one person that has to be, um, you know, whose time is being funded from this grant, you basically need to submit a budget and justification for that other person separately. So please make sure to do that. Um, and other than that, uh, just a reminder that this funding is directed at, 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 at you and is not at the institution. Um, this basically is because this, these fun, you know, seed grants are truly seed grants. They're small proposals, as I mentioned, uh, you know, $5,000 up to 20,000. And so, you know, we obviously want the uh, funds to go directly to support you um, and uh, not really um, and, and and don't really include institutional overhead. So basically that's that's how we are managing this sort of small grants proposal uh, opportunity. Uh, next slide. So here's an example of what a budget might look like. So here's the table uh, for the budget and of course the budget justification below that which basically highlights each of the categories and an explanation of each of the items in that table. Next slide. The letters of support are also uh, a key part of the proposal application. Uh, we need one letter from the PI of the science activation team that you're going to be working with, uh, which basically uh, provides uh, you know, verification that they are aware that this is something that you're proposing and that it aligns with what they plan to do as part of their um, uh, project as well. Um, you need a letter from a supervisor or employer if you're a graduate student or a postdoc. Um, and then you also need a letter from each team member 
that's listed in your proposal. So um, the other thing also to note is that I, we strongly encourage you to use the templates that are provided uh, on our website. Um, that'll help you a lot in terms of making sure that you tick all the boxes um, in terms of what's needed for those letters. Next slide. A biographical sketch uh, is also uh, required, and it's basically uh, the typical NASA format. Again, a template for that is provided, so uh, be sure to, to include that. And there's a separate one that's required for each team member. Um, and so, yeah, that should, be, that should be part of your application, too. Next slide. We also require a current and pending funding uh, statement. And so here's an example of the kinds of information that's needed for that. Um, and so this is typically something that's requested as, as part of any kind of NASA proposal as well. And uh, again, templates are provided for this. Next slide. So how do we do this uh, funding? I already mentioned that these grants are directed at individuals. They're not to institutions. This is because these, these proposals and these grants, these are for small projects. Um, and uh, we wanna make sure that, that you maximize the usage for these to support what you need to do. So because of that, you know, the requirements are that you be a US citizen or a permanent resident um, to make you eligible to receive this funding. Um, we basically, once you're, once you're approved for funding, we uh, basically would um, include you as a supplier for Arizona State University, which is how the funding is dispersed, and it's considered taxable income for the submitter. So uh, uh, please take that into account as you as you propose. Uh, next slide. All of the proposals um, will well actually we'll we'll evaluate them soon after they're submitted at the end of August, and so the notifications are expected to go out at the end of September. Um, all of the awardees will be expected to attend a kickoff meeting. That'll be sometime around mid-October. Uh, and that will be used to um, basically set you up with supplier accounts and to discuss some of the reporting procedures. So post-award reporting and things like that, as well as some of the kind of monthly kind of check-in that we uh, require as part of, uh, as part of the year-long project that you're gonna be doing. Um, so once these supplier accounts have been established, the awardees are basically given all of the funding in full, and uh, we also discuss kind of some of the uh, post-award kind of uh, requirements that uh, need to be met as well. Next slide. So just, yeah, just a few tips that I wanted to note. Next slide. Um, Definitely, you know, we provide all of this information for your benefit so that you provide us with the strongest proposal. Um, and, and we did actually get a very strong set of proposals for the last opportunity that we had offered. Um, but this is actually, you know, success rate at this point is probably for these grants is on the order of 30 to 50 percent, which is which is really uh, high for a, a typical proposal opportunities. So I hope that many of you will will make use of this opportunity uh, to do something that you're really passionate about and to do something that you really care about. Um, your proposal should be written in collaboration with the science activation team that you're working with. That is really key. Um, and actually, you know, I'll, I'll show you kind of the table of uh, science activation goals that most of these teams are trying to uh, align with, and they're you know they're basically trying to align with one or more of the objectives that are part of that table. And so, it would be good to make sure that your project basically aligns with the kinds of goals that the science activation team that you're going to be working with um, uh, aligns with. Uh, use the templates. Um, ask for help if you need it. Um, that's basically you know the main um, message that I wanted to to make sure to share. Uh, def we're definitely available to help as and when you need that. Next slide. This is the evaluation rubric for uh, the proposals that you would submit. Uh, we evaluate them in five different categories, uh, the motivation or need for the project, the proposed work, the quality of that proposed work, and how it aligns with the science activation team's goals, uh, the work plan, um, how well that's uh, how well that's described, um, the outcomes and impact, the budget and justification, and there's three ratings for each of those depending on 
how well you actually address those five different aspects that I just talked about. So this is, again, something that's available on our website as well as part of the resources. So please make sure that when you're preparing your proposal, you are, uh, are, are making sure that you are actually hitting on each of the five points and addressing them well as part of that proposal. Next slide. And I mentioned the uh, science activation goals. These are the top level objectives and the mid level objectives that you know the science act. Each of the science activation teams has to address one or more of these of these objectives. And so, one of the things that you really want to do is to when you're working with that science activation team is to understand you know which of these objectives they are trying to address and to make sure that your project actually is aligned with that and is not at cross purposes with with the kinds of things that they're trying to achieve, of course. So, uh, and, and this is, of course, also one of the resources that's available out there. So make sure that, you know, you have access to that too. Next slide. Uh, 